Hello, my name is Kai and I am the uh, site reliability engineer at Taxify. I've been there uh, actually almost five years now. Uh, me and my partner Tarmo, who is also here, uh, started uh, in the early 2014. And at, at, at that time, uh, Taxify ran on uh, small virtual private server at the uh, local uh, uh, hosting provider. Uh, and the uh, middle of uh, 2015, we started to look up uh, AWS and we migrated to AWS at the end of the 2015. So we have been heavily used at uh, AWS almost uh, three, actually uh, already three, three years now. So uh, I will uh, talk about uh, AWS networking at general way. I will not talk about uh, uh, some taxify specific things, but uh, what we have, have uh, found out uh, about uh, cloud networking, because our background is uh, general uh, data center, before we moved to the cloud, we actually run uh, Taxify in uh, dedicated servers. So, change to the cloud was actually uh, very hard to us because uh, the networking and the virtual servers are not the same compared to the dedicated ones. So, if you are renting uh, uh, rack space on uh, some Database, uh, data center, so you are deploying uh, physical servers and uh, network there. So the networking speed is pretty obvious. It's uh, limited by your uh, top of the rack switch and the uplink, but uh, it's totally different in the cloud environment because uh, cloud environment is uh, basically just a very big array of servers and uh, when you are renting your uh, virtual machines uh, your virtual machines will end up uh, randomly in those uh, big arrays so if your two servers are going to talk uh, with each other they, uh, they are not uh, next to each other uh, there are maybe some kilometers of uh, cables between them. Uh, so, uh, uh, one availability zone is, is uh, not uh, one data center. In the bigger, in the bigger regions, uh, one, one, one availability zone might be a lot of uh, or many different data centers. So even if you deploy your virtual machines in the same availability zones, they, it's not guaranteed that uh, they will be nearby. And uh, most of the cases, you even want to deploy your virtual machine in several availability zones because you want to be like uh, failure and tolerant uh, uh, to the zone uh, failures, so this uh, even uh, makes uh, network harder. And also, uh, you must be aware that uh, networking is on the cloud environment. All it, it's it's free only uh, inside one availability zone. So if you deploy servers to the multiple availability zones and uh, they talk uh, to each other, then this is the internal traffic in your uh, architecture point of view. It's not free. You will be uh, pay for that. So keep uh, that in mind. And if you're looking at uh, network architecture uh, slides, then you probably see something like that. So, Every time you create a AWS or cloud account, the cloud provider will, be create, will create a virtual private cloud network for you. And this is uh, a private network only for you. It's, uh, it has its own subnets. You can create uh, 
different setup, and so on. And uh, this is my first question. Do you know how it's done? How can cloud provider uh, do that? Anyone? No? Basically, it's software-defined network. This network topology exists only on the software. It's not uh, some kind of the uh, harder uh, thing. Basically, if you see the networking router here, this router doesn't exist. It's only abstraction. And also Internet Gateway is a uh, shared uh, resource. So how this uh, software-defined network works? Basically, <coughs> all the traffic that you are doing is uh, tunneled over IP to IP tunnels. So basically, clients uh, don't see the actual uh, physical network. They only see the virtual network. So all the traffic is uh, encapsulated. So how this uh, one virtual machine, uh, how, how this traffic uh, can go to the another virtual machine or to the internet? Uh, Amazon has developed its own uh, property uh, service called Mapping Service. And this uh, Mapping Service lives uh, in, in hardware. It's implemented in hardware. It's implemented in uh, virtual. Uh, it's uh, if you know the AWS the terminology, the compute nodes or, or virtual machine nodes are called uh, elastic compute nodes (EC2). So this uh, mapping service uh, uh, lives in EC2 virtual uh, sorry uh, network interface cards. So network interface cards. Uh, are uh, doing uh, mapping service and this mapping service uh, provides you all the routings, all the security groups, all the other networking stuff uh, that your uh, machine or uh, VPC topology needs. And if you uh, update the security groups, so your secure security group uh, uh, data is distributed among all the EC2 instances uh, that you use in near real time. So, uh, yeah, and uh, this is this mapping service is actually very capable. It's uh, looking at all the packages that you are sending in or sending out. So, and actually, this is very clever solution because. Uh, if you think that AWS doesn't need to provision uh, for, your, for its own infrastructure uh, nothing special. All the DynamoDBs, all the S3, all the other uh, AWS services are actually also EC2 servers. Exactly the same virtual machines as, in, as the client. And they basically use the same uh, backend storage elastic block store as the clients. So uh, this, this kind of the, uh, structure is very dynamic or very scalable. So AWS doesn't need to pre-provision uh, pre uh, its, its own uh, services before. And it can go hold the whole uh, uh, data center as as it needs. Or, and this is uh, how the uh, virtualization looks. Uh, this is, so this uh, diagram illustrates uh, Xen hypervisor. Actually, there are uh, many different uh, solutions uh, used currently, but this uh, Xen hypervisor is the oldest one, but it's uh, usable. For example, T2 instances uh, and then three type of instances uses uh, this uh, Xen hypervisor. So this system works this way in a network perspective that uh, all the virtual machines that clients use uh, doesn't have access to the physical network interface card, but uh, the uh, machine hosts one special virtual machine that we are calling uh, domain zero. This domain zero 
uh, runs uh, network drivers for the physical hardware and also the software proxy drivers that uh, communicates to the client the virtual machine uh, virtual interface drivers. So all the networking traffic goes through this uh, DOM0 and uh, exits uh, from DOM0 to network interface card. So this, this was the, uh, the oldest uh, solution. The next uh, solution in the evolution in the networking uh, evolution was uh, this uh, 10 gigabit uh, uh, Intel uh, networking interface card. This uh, interface card is uh, somehow special because it uh, uses uh, single root IO virtualization uh, technology. It means that this uh, one physical network interface card can expose itself uh, with many different PCI interfaces uh, to the machine. So AWS can assign uh, those uh, virtual PCI interfaces to the uh, to the client virtual machines. So if the client virtual machine have a proper network driver that can talk to this uh, Intel network interface, so uh, this uh, client uh, virtual machine then can, can do uh, direct uh, network uh, traffic uh, without uh, DOM0. So this is much better way, less cheapening, uh, better performance and so on. And this uh, other uh, networking card that we see in this uh, slide is actually uh, this uh, AWS proprietary card that does software-defined networking. And this is also the old uh, 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 technology, M4 and C4 type of uh, servers uh, used that. And the latest uh, generation uh, uh, virtualization is actually uh, virtualization that is implemented in hardware. So latest generation machines, the fifth generation AWS EC2 machines are hardware virtualized machines. So no DOM0 anymore, no Xen. The whole machine, the 100% of the machine can be provisioned out to the clients. So the uh, virtualization is done in the internal chips and, the, and uh, all the networking traffic and the storage traffic goes uh, directly to the uh, special network card and this network card uh, does uh, the software defined networking and all the other provisioning and security uh, things. This uh, technology is uh, uh, developed by Anna Purna Labs, which is uh, uh, AWS-owned company. It's Israeli-based uh, uh, chipmaker company. Uh, so this technology is uh, property for AWS. Actually, the other uh, cloud networks uh, uh, like Google and uh, Azure does this software-defined network totally different way. Actually, each of the clouds does it totally different way. So, uh, this, this last uh, picture is uh, like uh, the fifth generation machines, so C5, M5, R5. Uh, to use those uh, uh, so-called enhanced networking uh, cards, you need to have a proper driver inside your uh, virtual machine. So, for example, if you are using uh, M4 uh, virtual machines, but you don't have uh, a driver for this Intel card, you probably will just use uh, this virtual interface with, with driver and uh, you are uh, doing networking through Xen. But if you want to use fifth generation machines, uh, there is no Xen, you must have uh, a special EMA driver to so, so you can't uh, do networking without it. Uh, so the easiest way to do uh, is uh, just use uh, Linux AWS kernel. 
So you just uh, get this all the, the sets of uh, triumphs out of the box. But if you paint the AMI, the uh, Amazon machine inch, you still need to tag them or set attributes to the machine inch. So the Amazon knows when he launched the machine that this uh, inch is uh, capable to use uh, ENA driver or this uh, Intel SRIOV driver. So this is the way you can uh, enable this uh, feature in the AWS command line uh, tool. So the new thing is personal network. In, in the past, when uh, those th uh, three and four generation machine uh, uh, didn't have uh, first uh, networking capability. So uh, basically all the physical networking speed was divided by the virtual machines and uh, if you pick a small machine, you just uh, uh, got the machine that was uh, shaded down uh, more and uh, if you pick a bigger machine you will get uh, uh, bigger limits. But uh, with the parsable uh, capability uh, your networking, uh, if, if you launch machine your machine gets uh, networking credits. It basically, this system works like CPU credits and VBS credits, if you know that uh, how this works. Basically, uh, you launch machine and you will get uh, some, uh, some uh, credits with it, so you can uh, do more networking uh, after the start. And if, if your machine is sitting idle, you will get uh, credits uh, for that. And uh, if you suddenly need to do more networking traffic, you can then spend your credit and uh, uh, do a lot more. Or, or you, you, you can use uh, faster networking when your, when your baseline. Uh, so, uh, and this uh, credit system is a bit different uh, uh, with if you compare it with CPU and uh, EBS uh, credit system because AWS haven't disclosed how this actually works. AWS uh, has uh, just encouraged you to measure it yourself and find it all, uh, yourself how this works. And this is what I have done here. So in this uh, slide I compare T2 and T3 instances and uh, actually this uh, T3 uh, instance uh, has uh, a little parameter as is now enabled is unlimited. This unlimited means that uh, this instance is not uh, throttled down if you spend all your CPU credits, but uh, if you uh, use more CPU when uh, the baseline you will just uh, pay more. <laughs> so in normal case you don't want to do it, but uh, uh, like this graph uh, or measurement shows, this unlimited also affects uh, the networking uh, <coughs> dropping or, or limiting. So uh, this, this is actually measured by iPerf uh, tool. Uh, so this is the first uh, 10 minutes after uh, launching the machine and uh, as you see, uh, after, after I spend my all the uh, so-called credits, my network was uh, dropped down to the baseline and uh, this small machine baseline is uh, 127 megabits uh, per second. But uh, if, I, if I'm looking at this chart, I can think that, wow, this T3 small is actually a very good machine. But OK, <laughs> let's, uh, let's measure uh, a bit longer time. And we see that this T3 uh, uh, small, without unlimited enabled, just behaves a little bit differently. I don't know why why AWS choose uh, this way, but uh, 
this, this is uh, actually a complete surprise uh, for me that uh, this uh, CPU uh, attribute affects uh, networking uh, traffic this way. But uh, this is how it is. Quick question. Yep. Like, what's the uh, it's time? Oh, uh, yeah, it's time uh, in seconds. In, in and uh, bandwidth in megabits. So uh, here you see that uh, the older machines, uh, older generation machines, uh, do not have bursting, and the fifth generation machine have. So uh, this M5 large can burst uh, uh, up to 10 gigabits per second in the first uh, 300 uh, seconds. Uh, and if you don't do that, your credits are not spent. You can do basically 10 gigabits networking first uh, the whole day. But you, you can't continuously uh, use 10 gigabit per second uh, internet speed. Or network speed, sorry. And um, this uh, R2 type of instances are also interesting because this R4 and R5 actually uh, both uses the ENA uh, adapter, but uh, AWS has decided that R5 has more credits than uh, R4. So also the packets per second are limited, of course, because this mapping service need to look all the incoming and outgoing packages. So as you see, uh, in time, it uh, has grown uh, very, very much. So uh, the fifth generation machines uh, network uh, speed is so, so good that we actually don't uh, uh, ever uh, hit this uh, package, uh, package code limit. Maybe if you have some kind of uh, UDP type of the traffic, where the package is very small compared to the bandwidth, maybe this way you can hit this. And of course, the C5 large is the smallest uh, C5 uh, type of instance, so if you pick the, hard, the largest one, of course, the package per second limit is also larger. So let's talk about the uh, limits. Um, uh, this uh, actually it, we, we wanted to use NLV as a network load balancer. We wanted to use network load balancer as internal uh, load balancer. So it's not exposed to the internet, but it's used internally in, in VPC. And we, are, we use multiple accounts and we use uh, VPC planning. And uh, what, we feel, we, what we found that uh, this NLB is based on uh, fifth generation EC2 machines and uh, it, it somehow the VPC capability differs, differs uh, compared to the older generation. So you can't use uh, NLB as your internal load balancer if you are not using uh, fifth generation machine uh, everywhere. So, uh, basically, the older generation machine can't uh, do traffic through NLP if pairing is used. So, okay, probably it's uh, age case, but uh, uh, this uh, describes that uh, those uh, machine generation matters. Uh, so, you probably all know that uh, you can't send out emails from cloud, because if you can, when all the world, uh, all the spammers in the world <laughs> will use it, because if you launch uh, new EC2 machines, all the machine, if if you use uh, public IPs, uh, all the machine will get the public IPs from uh, uh, IP pool, and uh, AWS just wants to pro protect this pool, so this pool is will will not be. Uh, blacklisted. 
So in this slide you see that uh, after I made uh, three attempts uh, to connect to the port uh, 25, I will uh, AWS uh, blocked my request. So if if I if I need to set up a proper email server, then by default I can't do I can't do that. The AWS thinks that, uh, okay, we have a service called simple email service, you can, you can, you can use it, but it's, uh, it's not free, and uh, uh, okay, the money is maybe not the issue for us, but uh, this, uh, this service is not elastic, because uh, you can't just configure uh, in the web console or, or uh, with the CLI, uh, parameters like you can in DynamoDB, for example, you need to request uh, those units from the technical support. And, and what happens if you hit this thing, like we do it, uh, in, the, in the middle of the day? So you need to, uh, uh, need to write to the technical support or contact the technical support. Uh, if you have uh, like enterprise support, you can like chat them or call them. But, but anyway, it might take take uh, hours or even uh, until the next day when this uh, unit is lifted. So we actually don't use it uh, anymore. It was uh, like short uh, test period when we used this, uh, but but it's there. But of course, you can also set up the email server in the AWS. You can request uh, IP reverse uh, 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 IP reverse uh, uh, like um, uh, the if if your server have uh, your own uh, domain name and the reverse uh, record also when you can ask uh, AWS technical support when they lift this limit for your uh, specific st static IP, the elastic IP only. So it's, it's possible, but uh, we actually don't use it. We, we send our email out uh, through third party uh, uh, Servers. We, we host our uh, server in, in regular uh, data center and we send email out uh, through, the, uh, through our own servers in outside of the cloud. Okay, yeah, when you use VPC, you probably also use uh, Amazon DNS server service. Uh, you, of course, you can uh, use your own, well, set up your own DNS server if you like. You can set the DHCP options that uh, points to your own DNS, but who wants to do that? Uh, the uh, AWS DNS service is actually the best one uh, you can get, but there are limits, of course. Do you know what is the limits? How many DNS requests can you do from one EC2 instance? Anybody? No? Uh, we mentioned that actually you can do 1200 uh, requests per second and after that you will be it down. So if you plan to uh, build web crawler or something like that, uh, what, it, what needs to do very uh, large amount DNS uh, requests when you actually hit this uh, limit. And uh, the worst side of the AWS networking are hiccups. Uh, for two also mentioned that this is the really uh, pain in the ass. Uh, once upon a time, we, uh, we tried we tried this Elastic File System. We wanted to use it, but uh, those network uh, hiccups. Uh, uh, just prevented us to use this service because uh, our uh, servers, uh, their server just uh, died if those hiccups uh, happened. 
and uh, so we we don't use uh, this uh, elastic file system. But uh, what we uh, well, I actually when five generation machine uh, appeared in our region, that we are mainly using, uh, we at day one well, actually the next day. Uh, the fifth generation appeared, we started to migrate uh, our uh, server to the, our four generation machines to the fifth generation and uh, we found out that one availability zone was totally bad. Actually this uh, kind of uh, up to eight seconds uh, network uh, small outages uh, happen too often in the day and we even uh, change it back to the four generation for one region, for, for one availability zone. And this, this kind of uh, hiccups is very hard to measure. We even uh, developed a uh, uh, shared networking uh, monitoring service. This is a special service that uh, in a mesh-like way uh, sends uh, very little UDP packages to one server to another and then uh, collects all those uh, results to the Prometheus, so we can uh, 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 draw graphs in uh, Grafana. And uh, but but actually this uh, this measurement doesn't uh, s show you the the real situation because these hiccups can because we have we are using software defined network. This those hiccups are point to point hiccups. Not that I'm measuring, I, I, I might ping uh, my server from uh, point A to point B, but uh, this uh, hiccup happens point B to point C. So this is the real uh, headache. And uh, the next headache that you can have is uh, you have packet loss uh, from, from traffic that comes from internet. So you don't have any visibility about it. Uh, this, this was one, uh, one time in the past. Uh, we, we, we are running network load balancer uh, that is exposed to the internet, that, uh, that's uh, our, our front end. And uh, one of our uh, availability zone started to have uh, packet loss and we couldn't see it anywhere. And our client started to uh, started to uh, approach our, our support and say that you have some kind of uh, networking issues, but we wouldn't see it. And uh, after we look our system, I noticed uh, uh, road listed free uh, head checks. But yes, we have uh, packet loss in one of our uh, availability zone or. Uh, one of our we thought we one of our uh, public IP, so we actually migrated uh, service to another uh, network load balancer, and uh, so we get uh, uh, rid of it. And the health checks are good, yes, <laughs> we are we are good until we get down our uh, service, and this is uh, what happened us. Uh, those uh, three uh, public IPs that I mentioned was uh, registered in Route 53 with the weighted uh, uh, configuration. So Route 53 uh, health checks uh, uh, checking the, their health and Route 53 health checks are uh, it's distributed service so the health checks are done from remo uh, remote uh, uh, regions like uh, around the world, like uh, from Singapore, from Australia, from USA, and so on. So, what happened uh, was that AWS had uh, uh, actually our region had uh, uh, interconnection uh, routing failures with other AWS regions. So, all those health checks that are remotely made was uh, those health checks failed because uh, uh, AWS internal the interregion uh, uh, network was down. And of course, what HealthCheck decides, it decided, I can reach uh, your service and it took us down. 
but uh, the internet connection actually uh, was healthy. So uh, we saw in our graphs that something is happening, our traffic is uh, falling, we uh, log in everywhere and we didn't see it. What the hell? Our connection is good, but uh, our service is, uh, is down. So yeah, we, now we are not using that. <laughs> So health checks uh, can be bad also. And my last uh, one is uh, if uh, some, someone has uh, more expertise on AWS, this is like a little hacking quiz. Uh, so uh, let's, let, let's, let's uh, see that you have uh, this uh, lonely EC2 machine, this totally snowflake, you can't remake it like <laughs> with CloudFormation. And uh, this is owned by some of your teams. Uh, this, uh, uh, this machine was deployed in a public subnet, and you have a uh, uh, request that you need to move this server to the private subnet. But you can't destroy it, you can't uh, remake it. How will you do it? Can you take it down? Can you shut it down? Yeah, you can shut it down, but uh, you can't re recreate it. Storage, recreating private storage, storage. Yes, <laughs> this, this is the quickest way. Actually, actually, if you read the documentation, then documentation will say that uh, take the snapshot and, and um, create the machine image and start the new machine. But yeah, the quickest way is actually create new machine to the new uh, to the private uh, subnet and uh, deattach uh, EBS volumes from uh, both of the machines and reattach this uh, snowflakes uh, root volume to the new machine and uh, start it up and you will get the same machine with different networking uh, configuration okay questions Why don't you move to uh, Microsoft? Asia? I don't know. <laughs> AWS just... Uh, uh, in time we, we started to use AWS, AWS was more mature. I, I think this is the correct answer. This is why we are not using Asia. So, <coughs> after a while of using AWS and the security groups and all the ignorance that you get about IP addresses and stuff by this, do you imagine yourself ever going back to like manually managed firewalls and stuff? Mm, I think no. <laughs> if, if, you, if you have like five machines, then it's pretty easy to <laughs> manually. <laughs> configure them, but if you have uh, like tens or hundreds machines, it's, it's not doable. Any more questions? Mm -hmm. um, can you tell me, like, we all know that cloud is a lie and it's uh, someone else's computer uh, and, and everything has, uh, has hard limits. Uh, how many of, uh, of those limits uh, have you hit in Taxify where uh, even the Amazon support says, I'm sorry guys, we cannot help you. Um, actually, I don't remember any of those, because uh, if we hit some limit or we see some weird action, we start to dig in the documentations and we start uh, Google and so on. So, and we, we try it out. Like I said, we, uh, we are coming from uh, on-premise uh, or uh, like regular databases. We are actually experts in uh, Linux uh, world. So uh, actually this uh, AWS was just uh, uh, not very well understood when we started to use it. But uh, we, we expected it to behave more like uh, physical machines. So this was the uh, thing that we need to figure out. More questions? 
Okay, I, I have a couple from, from, from before. So what that account model do you guys use to testify? Do you have like separate database accounts for each service or how do you roll? Um, uh, actually, yeah, we are using uh, several accounts, but uh, uh, we don't have any system like uh, for that. But uh, we, we separate uh, our services to the accounts so that uh, uh, if different uh, teams need to uh, maintain them, then it's better done with a different account when the different Different people from different team uh, uses the same account, like shared account. Mm -hmm. So uh, our separation is not so wide, but uh, our production service, for example, uses uh, three accounts, and we have several accounts for uh, different kind of testing. So. Okay. Cool. And one more question. As you said before, uh, when you started to use AWS, it was all new for you guys, and so on. How do you train your staff now who is like just onboarding uh, Taxify? How do you train them the world of AWS? We train them ourselves. So we, we, we are doing training sessions and uh, it's, you, you learn quicker when you do stuff. So, so internal training and just throw them in the water? Yes. All right. Cool. Uh, if there are no more questions, then let's give a big hand to Kain. And uh, the venue is open until 10, so feel free to hang around and ask questions and network and stuff. So thank you everybody for coming.